Hey Defenders, welcome back. What if we had the ability within Copilot to run active response commands to, let's say, block an IP address on the local endpoint's firewall and leveraging Wazoo's active response to do so? Well, now we actually can. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys what prereqs need to be done to actually enable this to be able to run on the endpoints, as well as how we can invoke Wazoo's active response to block an IP address directly from Copilot. So stick around and we'll jump into it. Make sure before proceeding on with this video to grab the latest update of Copilot. And if I go into my agents here, you'll also see a tab within the agents overview called active response to actually invoke a active response, which in this case, we're gonna interact with the Windows local firewall to block or unblock any outbound traffic to the defined IP address that we can define ourselves. So under the hood, what we're doing is leveraging Wazoo's active response, and we've also built a exe file for you guys that will need to be upload it onto the endpoints in order for this to work. Those are the steps I'm gonna cover in this video as well. So if we select the information icon here, uh, you see some of the requirements. So we are leveraging Python 11 under the hood, so you will need to install that on the Windows endpoint that you're looking to run this active response on. We do provide a single line command that you can use to install Python, or you can install install Python, whichever means or process you you seem necessary. So that is the first prereq that we need to have done. We need to make sure Python is installed onto the endpoint that will be running the active response script. In that case, that would be my uh, Windows box here. And if I open a command pump and pipe and uh, type in Python, we see that we have Python uh, 11 here installed. First prereq is done. Now what we need to do is actually download the Windows firewall.exe. So this is an exe file that is going to exist on our endpoints. And this is what the Wazoo manager is going to actually invoke. So if you see in the configuration down below, we are telling the Wazoo manager to invoke this executable on the endpoint. I'm gonna copy this full command here and I'm gonna take it to PowerShell on my endpoint. I'm gonna paste that guy in there and just download. So this is going to reach out uh, to our repository where we actually host the exe file for you guys. The exe file is of course gonna be compiled so it's not human readable, um, but the source code is baked within uh, the Copilot repo as well. As of now, we only have the Windows Firewall active response, but I do plan to add more active response capabilities such as like DNS sync calling, for example. Um, and really, you're not limited to anything. Wazoo gives us the full flexibility to really do any type of active response that we're looking to do. If you can script it, then you can do it. So whatever unique use case, and this is also what makes Wazoo's active response really popular is we can customize it to fit any use case that you have. I think it's within the readme. If you're looking to write a Python file and then convert that to an exe, we can use this pi installer to do so. Um, so there are some instructions here. Maybe I'll make a video on it later. Uh, if you're looking to craft your own exe files uh, using pi installer, which I highly recommend, it's super easy to do to convert a Python script to an executable. Um, then there are some instructions on the uh, within the GitHub uh, project as well. So you can always view that there um, if you'd like. We should have now our Windows Firewall EXE, and let me show you what, guys where this is actually going to exist on the endpoint. So if we follow the, the normal installation path for the Wazoo agent on a Windows endpoint, you guys should be familiar with program files, OSEC agent, and then if we go into our active response and go into bin, we'll see this Windows Firewall EXE exist here. This is the EXE that we're going to invoke on our Windows endpoint. Now we need to configure our Wazoo manager to actually enable this executable to run. What I'm gonna do is copy the syntax that we have here on my Wazoo manager here. I'm gonna open up the osec.conf and I've already added it, but you can add it. I recommend uh, where, where the other like active response tags are within the default Wazoo, um, but 
that wazoo adds by default. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and add our block in here. So we're adding this new active response command to the manager. Essentially, we're telling the manager, hey, this is a executable that I want you to run on the Windows endpoint. And then there's some active response options here that we can set, but the most important feature being this configuration piece being that, hey, the command that we're gonna invoke is going to relate to the command that we are invoking here, which in turn is going to relate to that executable on the Windows endpoint. So once we have that done, uh, we're gonna go ahead and restart the Wazoo Manager service, and we should now be ready to actually test this feature out. This isn't necessary, but I do recommend it just so you get a log as to when this active response actually runs. So we can actually create a wazoo rule for this as well, in which I'll show you guys within Grafana as well. So that wazoo actually logs like when we run an active response so we're not blind um, to this activity also happening on our endpoint. So if I actually jump back onto the manager here, and I'm gonna create a new rules file. Um, this can be any name or num. Uh, this file can be any name that you want it to be. It does, of course, need to be a .xml, uh, but this is just the naming convention that I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, and I'm gonna copy this rule syntax in there, and I'm gonna save this file. And actually, I need to probably change the permissions of this. Since I'm the root user, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to wazoo wazoo with the ch own. And I also need to change the permissions to, I think that's a 660 if I remember off the top of my head. Let's see if I got it right. And okay, cool. Do make sure you change the ownership and then the permissions. Uh, of the file as well to match all the other ones that you'll have within this directory. And if I cat this guy out, we'll see our new active response. And then we will also uh, restart the manager to load in those rules files. Let's go back into Copilot and here all of our prereqs are done. So we are now ready to invoke this. I've got Python 11 on my endpoint. I've got my new Windows firewall executable on the endpoint. I've got the configuration within the Wazoo manager set. And then I've also got our rule set uh, configured as well. And then I've restarted the Wazoo manager server. We are all good to go. So to actually invoke this, what I'm gonna do is on my endpoint here, I'm gonna select invoke action. And the action that I wanna do is block. So let's say for example, I wanna block a particular IP address on this, from this endpoint being able to access. Uh, let's just say like 1.1.1 in this example. If I go on to this endpoint, let's say I try to ping 1.1.1. All right, we're starting to get responses back. So good, now this will, invoke our uh, executable that we have on our Windows endpoint to actually create a firewall rule to block this IP address. So now if I try to ping 1.1.1, we now see that we're getting failures. If I open up the local firewall settings of this endpoint, we will now see a outbound rule has been created. So if I go ahead and uh, double click this guy to open it, we now see a block for IP address 1.1.1.1. So we are now blocking traffic to this IP address. Now let's say add another one uh, I can invoke. Let's say I want to block 8.8.8, .8 .8, Google's DNS servers. So if I submit that, we'll see the uh, very similar action. Now, if I refresh my uh, outbound rules on my firewall, you'll see now that we also have a new rule to block 8.8.8. .8 .8. If I try to ping 8.8.8, .8 .8, boom, we get a failure. How can we also view this within Grafana? If I refresh here within Grafana, here we see our new active response rules that we've created starting to uh, kick off. And here, for example, we see blocked IP 8.8.8. .8 now too, we're getting logs as to uh, what IP addresses have been blocked. Now we're see also seeing other uh, Wazoo events coming in. So we see, hey, a rule has been added to Windows Defender Firewall. Right, and here we can see the remote address that was added, the rule name. Taking advantage of our Wazoo rule set that we provide as well, we're also getting uh, more in-depth logs. And we can see, you know, under the hood, we are using uh, NetSH binary on a Windows endpoints to actually add this rule. So we can see that event kicking off. We, of course, see it being kicked off by our Windows firewall. So we're getting more telemetry 
as to that. And now we're also logging what IP addresses are being blocked. So we have a record of that. Um, in turn as well, I can also unblock IP addresses. So if I want to, let's say unblock 1.1.1.1, and go ahead and submit that guy. Now, if I get onto my Windows endpoint here and refresh my firewall, we'll now see that that IP address 1.1.1 has been removed. And similarly, we'll also see that within our logs uh, here as well. The rule has been deleted. We're seeing our active response rule trigger as well, remove blocked IP. And what's really cool is that we can do all this directly within Copilot. And having the ability to write your custom active response scripts really the sky's the limit. If we go into the overview page, now let's say we want to block an IP address across all of our endpoints. So on the overview page, we can also select the active response wizard, um, select our windows. Again, this is the only one that we have anything for. So if you guys want to help contribute for Linux or Mac OS, uh, active response capabilities, that would be much appreciated as well. Um, but we'll select our windows firewall. We'll select an action. Let's I want to block, uh, let's just say 9.9.9.9 for this one. And when I submit this, instead of invoking it on the one agent that we were doing, this will invoke it across the fleet of agents that are currently active with the Wazoo Manager. And if I refresh, we say our new blacklist rule here. And notice that we're not specifying a particular agent. This is going out to all agents that have been registered with the Wazoo Manager. So if you're looking to do like a global blacklist across all of your endpoints, uh, this is a good way to do it. And again, that's within the overview page where if I go directly into the agent itself, this will only correlate to that particular agent as noted here as well. But that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully this makes Wazoo's active response feature a little more user friendly for you guys and really kind of the sky's the limit as to what capabilities can be baked into this. So I appreciate you guys time and I will see you in the next one.